private sector than in government. So um, I think if we all work hard, if we all work together yeah. and uh, invest in the right areas, yeah. there's been a lot of talk about uh, value addition yeah. in the agriculture sector, yes. in the mineral sector. If there's enough investment in those areas, mm -hmm. I think it can create enough jobs for our children and grandchildren. Okay. Yeah. I just want to take you to question number four, Andrew, which is, um, let's talk about your journey at uh, City Hall and the foray into the executive director's office, which is uh, uh, as Andrew uh, Chitaka, Very and as well as the director engineer. Very interesting. I joined KCCA in, uh, on 1st November 2011. Yeah. And before then, I was... For so much, yes. CEO of you know whatever, yes. they, they give so much. This is the reason why you are actually on the bench because of my credibility. <laughs> Thank you so much. But now yes. they attack you, they yes. vilify you, yes. and the goal yes. is to weaken you financially. Yes, is to weaken your yes. your owner. Yes, these are slanderers. Yeah. So I'm glad that someone would stay up at night. Yes, to ask and learn about me. Yeah. And I pray that uh, in the next two months, because I know many Ugandans who travel overseas, yeah, yeah, yeah. when they go there, yeah. they, one of the things, because the media has been so much, and yeah. Sam Kutesa, yeah. the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, yeah. has really not done a good job. He has dropped the ball on this issue. Yeah. Why? Mm. So many of us are being accused of being gay killers, including me. You've just had that person. Yeah. Uganda is being accused that we kill gays, which actually is absolutely untrue. Yeah. And because of this, it has affected our tourism, it affects people who go overseas to do work or study, mm -hmm. it affects uh, whenever you go to a conference, hi, my name is Eddie Okila, where are you from? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Uganda. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are the gay killers. <laughs> and then you begin to describe <laughs> it. So one of the things that I've done is yeah. I've written a book, yeah. which should be coming out. Um, I'm, I know that the, I keep saying the same thing, but the work of doing a book takes a long time, and I wish I could be supported. Yeah. You know, many people who write on this subject, yes. like Sylvia Tamale, yes. she's supported by the Rockefeller Foundation, yes. Carnegie Foundation, yes. there is money! Rockefeller is a very big brand, and um, as we go on, we will probably discuss the things we're trying to do to see that things change for the better. Good. Sean, on the CEO bench, for everyone who is following, we're live on our YouTube studio, where we actually stream from. So YouTube studio, for everybody asking for a link, is actually House of Talent. You. confident in themselves and what they are offering yes. I think that's the biggest problem like women will easily settle for a less pay than men would okay yeah uh, Mona Onyeto Deke goes on to say uh, well, I think this is a comment says I didn't know that beauty products are taxed at 60% wall they are I pray that changes soon but they are okay so yeah. with that challenge of 60% setting up the company you're doing tours all across the world um, you know personal account is great but how these things are taxed becomes important yeah. for, for you know for your business later on yeah. as soon as you cross that cross that threshold of 50 million a year you know you're, 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 you're now in <laughs> the a, interest become more yeah, uh -huh. share, share. yes yeah.
post. You and the law is simply what it is. You and the law. In this show, we try to demystify the law for the ordinary person, make it simple for a teacher, for a lawyer, for a farmer, for a doctor, for a border border rider, for a cleaner, everyone in our society. This program touches on every aspect of our lives that relate to the law. Is it marriage? Is it property? Is it land? Is it traffic? Anything that touches on the law will be discussed in this program. Today, we're going to have an interesting conversation that will focus on the institution of marriage. I know most of us have attended marriage functions. Some of us are married. Most of us viewers are married. And, but what does it mean to be married? What does, how does the law look at marriage? So this conversation today will focus on demystifying the whole topic around marriage and how it is viewed from the eyes of the law. And to help us do this, I have a learned mind with me, and it's none other than my friend, uh, my colleague, Emmanuel Alau. Emma, you're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Hello, viewers. Thank you for having me. In, on the in, show. in House of Talent, when you fist bump, you spread uh, the love. So oh. <laughs> you do this, then you spread the love. Yeah, so Emma, how have you been? Well, I've, I've been great. Yeah, we're coming in from 42 days of, um, of a lockdown. How has it been on your end? Ah, it's been uh, quite difficult. Mm. You know, you wake up in the morning, yeah. you sit around the compound, uh -huh. you look at the time. You know, you lose, you lose sense of, uh, of the calendar because you yeah. fail to understand which is a Monday and which is a Sunday. You're, so. even, you're even lucky that you have a compound. <laughs> Some people live in one-bedroom houses yes. and have nothing to look <laughs> except their, uh, you know, iron sheet. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, and really, you know, you're you know, our first guest really on this program. And, and why do you think it's, you know, sort of important for people to just know about the law? Because I know you've been teaching law and practicing law for all these years, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, thank you. You know, when it comes to the law, mm. we, we basically live the law, yeah. you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, mm. you know. Mm. Whether it is in your bedroom, there is a law that governs it. If you're married, for example, yeah. even if you're single, there's, there could be something touching on the law. Yeah. Because you might be in your bedroom with an underage girl, <laughs> or you might be with another person's wife, you know. Oh, all yeah. the things are, are, are the law, you mm. know. When you jump on the border border, there is law. Mm. When you're driving, you're talk, we're talking about traffic. Yeah. You know, mm. if you if you go to a restaurant, you must ensure that you have the money because you you're consuming someone's energy yeah. and a, you know investment. Yeah. You know, so you must be able to pay for that. Oh. So we interact with the law at it's all times. Part of our yes. everyday life. Yes, man, you don't want to be in trouble after you know many years of um, working hard on it to realize that you have no rights at all simply because you didn't celebrate any of the marriages that are recognized within the laws of Uganda. With that, we come to the end of this edition of You and the Law. It's a bye from us. See you next time. told me, you know what, you're going to visit these places and I would want you to um, get these information from the places you're heading yeah. and make sure you come back with the samples of coffee. So he made you kind of like <laughs> a research assistant. In and uh, <laughs> I had no any idea, but uh, I was good in, uh, you know, I was traveling to Chigali. Yeah. And uh, actually, I didn't know how to speak that language. <laughs> I couldn't speak uh, the, those uh, <laughs> brothers of our language. And, but I had good Swahili. And yeah. in those offices, mm. they had French, uh, Swahili, and... A uh, bit of English. They are um, whole... Kinyarwanda. Kinyarwanda. Yeah. More, I mean, frequently mm. spoken. Yeah. Are those three. So, yeah, I went in those offices. I went to the Rwanda Coffee mm. <coughs> Authority. I moved on. I moved on to all those places in uh, uh, in in Rwanda because uh, I even didn't know the places. But I I had uh, I had directions on how to reach there, and I could easily use motorbikes. And yeah. 
they could hear the Swahili. I was like, now I'm going to do it. Uh, so he continued. Yeah, I came with a lot of samples and dropped to him. I had specifications, but I did not know how to differentiate or to kind of explain what exactly I came mm -hmm. with. But according to why, w what I requested from them, yeah. they gave me some samples. So I came back. Oh, he was so thankful. And yeah, we spent the whole time there talking about other things. But I'm sure for him, he knew that the goal is, mm. is hitting the target. So um, the next day, I had to travel to Chisoro. Yeah. <laughs> the next day. So I left alone what I was supposed to do. Because some people, we, we were many, not alone like me alone. But yeah. uh, I think he wanted to fulfill the, the, the story that we had when we were driving. About being rich. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. So I went to Chisoro, yeah. also the same thing, moved to several places. And from there, I could inquire also for some other places because yeah. I did not know the whole, the whole places, but I would inquire, where else can I find something as good as you having here or yeah. anything close mm. so they could refer you. Yeah, so there I went. I also came back. Actually from Kisora, I got a lot of coffee. I don't know, maybe <laughs> they give coffee for free. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I came, I came with a, Almost 20 kgs oh. you know, from there. I didn't pay for it because yeah. they were like, no, you take it. Because I explained to them where I'm coming from and I'm looking forward to try their coffee and um, see if it, the consistency is right. Mm. Maybe we would be communicating to them on the way forward. Yeah. They were so kind of uh, humbled. And since I came maybe to the... Um, the factory where they do the processing, they had to give me yeah. enough. So mm -hmm. there I left and then I also brought that. So the other week I had to go and do my uh, task as usual. Then I came back um, on Monday. So he told me to stay over. He had roasted. I didn't know in his suitcase mm. as he was coming to Uganda. <laughs> that is some years, like five years ago, he yeah. came with a, a sample roaster oh. in his bag. Yeah. So there he, he had roasted some coffee. He told me that five years ago, I came with my... <laughs> Imagine, you know, this advanced world, people tend to prepare themselves yeah, for in the in next advance. in advance mm. yeah so yeah he had roasted coffee yeah. during the weekend so when i came over i said whoa stay over something he prepared the coffee and he tried how is it yeah he was my boss i had to say <laughs> it's good <laughs> so, yeah, i had to say the coffee tastes good but you know what I wasn't used. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. He had some biscuits there, and yeah. So it became a kind of uh, a no because we had the twenty cages from some cages I got from Rwanda. Now yeah. he's roasting and drink his coffee over there yeah. now and then. So we're working, but now he's drawing more of the plans. There he started. He's like, you know what? We need to look for a place and have a coffee shop around. Mm. <laughs> Very fast. Yeah. How is it going to work? I have an idea. That's how he was like. So we, he would be the main man and I'm always following. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. So um, I started looking for places around the town and uh, yeah, I got some expensive places and all that. So it's... So he ordered for, um, it was uh, an espresso machine. Mm. He ordered for an espresso machine. Yeah, it was old actually. Mm. I wouldn't say that it was <laughs> that <laughs> beautiful machine. <laughs> <laughs> it was old. Yeah, but maybe he wanted some kind of vintage stuff. You know, sometimes they want to have 
that crafty things, yeah? yeah. It looks old, but doing perfect stuff, you yeah. know? Because it was linked to having a grinder on the side. It could, you know, mm. self-made, something like that. So, yeah, it took us about two months moving up and down. Yeah. Then we got a space at uh, uh, Cash and Curry supermarket. Mm. Those who are in Kavali, I'm sure they would be remembering some kind of bit of <laughs> a coffee shop and the Cash and Curry supermarket there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we did some arrangement. We arranged the place and then we got girls in to do some training as we are organizing the place, you know, do the Roofing, what yeah. doing mm. more furnitures, purchasing things from Kampala. So they were also doing training using that machine over, and uh, yeah, I would also mm. <laughs> be part of that. Yeah, so it's 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 interesting yeah. that so you know interesting. You, you went up to that. Um, yeah. We're going to take a short break. Uh, yes. This is a very interesting story, and yes. uh, after the break, we'll get back uh, yeah. right into it. Uh, this is uh, the coffee break on House of Talent. My name is Emmanuel. Today we are hosting Abdul Yusuf, who's giving us you know a hint on how he ended up in the coffee business telling us that his first experience actually with coffee <laughs> wasn't that good and we'll be talking about this and more as we get back into it uh, let's take a break uh, go grab a cup of coffee and we'll be right back this is house of talent television struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed technology has come in they've moved on yes we're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child on to tiktok has surpassed what's yap mm -hmm. the other one i call uh, I, I never call it facebook it's book face <laughs> why are you on book face <laughs> dad it's facebook it is, yeah. I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes.
Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Emmanuel. This is the show where we get to talk about everything that is involved in coffee. We get to talk about brewing. We get to talk about uh, issues like from tree to cup. For those of you who understand that, and for those of you who don't understand well, this is the right show for you. Before we went for a break, uh, we're talking to Mr. Abdul about his story, about you know where he started from and where he ended up in the coffee business. And he gave us his experience and said that his first experience with coffee actually wasn't good. He took it and you know said it was good so that he could impress his boss. <laughs> But I think it's something that really, it's a road that led him to this place. And I don't think it's something that you regret. Uh, it's something that has really built you into the man that you are in the coffee business. And uh, wherever your boss is, we want to say thank you to him because he has given the country a very good resource. Um, talking about your story, uh, I realized that uh, you got into roasting before you actually become a barista that you are now so we just want to dive uh into the coffee roasting process because that is our main topic for today we'll start off with what is coffee roasting for those of, for those who are watching they might not even know that coffee is roasted in the first place okay so what is coffee roasting yeah actually thank you so much um if i can talk about coffee roasting coffee roasting this is uh this is a process whereby your green coffee beans yeah are being uh, technically um using fire i would say mm. are being technically by use of fire being um put into i would say a way that uh, you want it uh, you're turning it from the green yeah and you're getting it to the level you're looking at let me say you're doing uh let me say medium roast yeah like to the level we have to on the, the screen there all right yeah and we that can looks see red on yeah. the screen so that is almost medium to dark roast yeah. so that one it's actually a reaction that took place to enable that coffee beans turn to that color yeah. by use of fire and the chemical reaction that took place during the fire and the coffee beans so the coffee turned into that color and it's softened so it can be easily grinded oh. and you can brew your coffee after that coffee is being roasted oh, that's interesting so yes. where does it start because i know that the coffee process itself actually starts from when you put a seed into the ground mm -hmm. like for uh, for those who grow coffee yeah. okay then it comes into the hands of whoever is going to do the roasting so yes. where do we start the process from and where does it end up into a cup yeah actually with coffee processing um, ideally i prefer to give uh, a kind of uh, um, a very clear understanding that should people should mind that before you start roasting your coffee you should understand the type of coffee you need to roast mm. you know that's the first thing if you're looking at the type of coffee then there follows the quality of the coffee yeah some people would just roast it i don't know how they do it but the right way or the right procedure could be you should first make analysis of your coffee mm. that's to do with the defects that the coffee should be having mm. you know right from the garden the coffee would be processed you know mm. as it's processed that is removing the outermost skins when it's already dry actually yeah removing the outermost skin you know the parchment and now the coffee is the green coffee mm. we are having now so um by the time you're having your green coffee you need also to take a very clear note that if you're having it in quantity it's not mixed up and you're having some defects into the coffee yeah. so in that in that way you should take notes you either have your moisture rice right for the coffee mm. that it is dried the coffee does is free from defects yeah. you know and the coffee maybe even the smelling could smell nice then the physical appearance the coffee looks more greener okay. because if it gives you a pale kind of looking then there is something wrong with the coffee maybe it had a poor storage mm. then the result in your cup 
will be disappointing. Will be different, yeah? Yes. Okay, so from what you're saying is that um, I need to first see what kind of coffee I have. I yeah. believe that in different parts of the world, uh, there are different types of coffee and uh, there are different uh, effects that uh, come onto this coffee. For example, the place where you grew it from, the kind of soil you used, you know. And um, by the time it comes to the cup, I think it, it, it still contains some of those elements, okay? So we have collected the coffee from, let's say, the farmers. We have uh, sorted the debris from it, and now we have it in our hands, okay? What type of equipment do we need to use to roast this coffee? I believe that there are commercial equipments, then there are some that we can actually use locally at home, I believe. Uh, before all these equipments came we <laughs> i remember that we were talking before the show there was this kawa coffee we had back in the day i believe that uh, some of those uh, equipments were used locally so what are some of these local equipments that we can use at home and also those that are used maybe in uh, bigger companies yeah actually if we are looking at coffee as a commodity mm. um or for value addition you need to follow certain standard yeah. which is required for you to ensure that you reach into the market and your coffee is matching with the standard which is you know uh, moving in the market yeah so if you're kind of hitting back let me say those people in the village they feel like they want to roast their coffee and uh, they want to enjoy it yeah this is different from the commercial you know um, it's a bit of it because you want to add value to it so that means you need to take your research on what is required and you do it yeah. you know on the market such that you maintain the quality the coffee should be having flavors and at the end of the day yeah. you're amazing people with what you've been cooking the other side yeah so yeah people use frying pans you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> they use frying pans but i to be honest, I don't feel like advising because <laughs> yeah, you, you know the problem you're going to have yeah. when you're doing that, the coffee is going to uh, retain more of the smoke into the coffee beans mm. and it's going to have more of uneven roast. Other coffee are going to be ready and the other coffees will also be a different, you know. Mm. So it's not advisable to do it that way because the only way we have to do it is doing it the right way mm. yeah you can grab your coffee when it's roasted according to your you know uh, preference preference mm. if you want a medium you want it you grab a pack and yeah. there's no substitution you can do it only to buy um, a small sample roasters there there because you can kind of regulate the temperatures on how you are roasting it yeah. actually that can also work for like a home-based stuff to make sure that you have your cup at the end of the day yeah. they are there i'm sure in in, in the in, in supermarkets, supermarkets. You can get mm. it in i don't know but you can have that you put in some little bit something like 200 or 150 grams of coffee yeah yeah you fire it up you know you can plug it on and then mm. It does the roasting. It does the roasting. So oh. you can enjoy your coffee that way. You yeah. Have your small grinder also because it's important. You yeah. cannot drink your coffee without grinding. Mm. Yeah, the process ends up with grinding and then you're having your, your cup of coffee. Your cup of coffee brewed. Okay, so that, that, that's on the home side. Yes. Uh, I believe that you work for a company that does this on yes. a commercial scale. Yes. Uh, how different? Are those uh, the ones that they use commercially from the local ones and are there any particular types that if I wanted to start a coffee roasting uh, company that I should look out for? Yeah actually um, with coffee uh, when, you're, when you're talking about roasters and how they are best in terms of their functions um, we have uh, um, a hot air roaster which is more of a convection mm. you know and then we have the other one with which has a direct heat you know I can just be so uh, direct so if you're having a direct heat roaster mm. so that means um, this is the effect that people don't know 
Hmm. If you're roasting coffee using one which is high, a direct heat, so the impact to the coffee beans is direct. Yeah. Because the drum keeps on turning, you're having your coffee inside the drum and it's heated under, which is more direct to the drum. Hmm. So the drum is turning and the heat impacts direct to the coffee beans. So at the end of the day, you find like still um, the flavors, mm. the flavors, you will have some variations in terms of flavors. You mm. might not develop as, as um, a whole yeah. than the other convection roaster, yeah. you know. And another effect when you, you, you're doing that, you can hardly make a high roast, you yeah. know, you can hardly make a high roast to the level that you're looking for, you know. You can do all that, but your determination of the cup will vary. Okay. You might not get it perfect. Mm. That is if you're doing a direct heat. So if you're doing a convection roaster, yeah. um, convection roaster is more kind of uh, interesting because it does a soft roasting whereby you're having a chamber which is having a cyclone on the other side so it transfers the heat yeah. to the drum inside and the paddles inside carries on dropping the coffee and the coffee is just dancing into the hot air yeah. you know something like that and the only thing you have to do is to regulate your burner ratio to ensure that the coffee is um, developing according to uh, your expectation. So at the end of the day, the bean would be more even, it would be soft roasted, there's no hard roasting. I think mm. you get what I'm trying to mean, the difference yeah, between the I two. Get it. Yeah. So it's not hard roasted, you know. So by the time your coffee is out, it's more even. Immediately you get the aroma out and yeah. you feel like, wow, you know. Yeah. That, that's, that's the difference with uh, having different direct and hot direct air, and hot, hot yeah. air you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you say that, you know, the coffee dances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it, does. It, it, it gives it a very good perspective. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to get more about into the flavors that I believe that because when you roast you have a light roast You yeah. have a, a medium yeah. then you have the dark roast yeah. and these basically give you very different flavors yes. Okay, but we're first going to go into a break then yes. we'll come back and talk about these flavors because I know the people out there actually want to know what kind of flavors do I get when I roast the coffee? Uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be right back after this break But we'll not only be talking about the flavors, but we're also going to do something special. We're going to brew some coffee like it's the tradition here and always I can't really wait to test the different kind of coffee that uh, the different barristers make here. This is House of Talent Television. The show is The Coffee Break. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this.
people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They have moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel, and remember, you can always catch us on our social media handles at House of Talent Television Uganda. That's on YouTube, on our Facebook, and on Twitter. And you can also catch us on House of Talent Television UG. Dot com and that is our website you can catch not only this show but also other shows that uh, will be happening um before we went into a break we we're talking about coffee roasting with abdul and uh, we we're getting into basically to talking about the different kinds of flavors that we get after roasting coffee but as we do that like i told you we're going to have something special as we talk about the different flavors that we have we're going to be brewing cup of coffee so abdul what are we going to be brewing today i see all these you know yeah actually we've have equipment we've got our hurry of v60 yeah and i'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it so we would make um we would brew our coffee it would be about uh, four cups of coffee yeah so i think we are four yeah so okay yeah okay Okay, yes. so yeah. where do we start? Uh, for those of you who are following at home, uh, just get your stuff ready and let's get into brewing this beautiful cup of coffee. All right. Abdul? So actually, this um, device Okay, just make it rest here. Yeah. So with this device, this is a Hario V60, you always get this, yeah? Okay. And you can improvise to get a jar for yourself. Mm. So it's actually pretty so easy to have um, this uh, equipment yeah. used. It's very easy. So actually, the the mechanism. I think what's most important is for you to master how much something like what quantity do you need to brew for like each cup of coffee. Yeah. I think that is so important because someone out there might want to brew his one and only cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. And since we about, you know, want to share, you know, <laughs> we need to do more than yeah, one. So um, with this standard um, measurement you require to use for a V60, you need to use about a, a ratio of about one to 15. So we are talking about um, one gram of coffee could be equivalent to like uh, um, one gram of coffee is equivalent to mm. one meal of, of water. Of water. Yeah, yeah. So if you say one to 15, we are talking about 15 grams of coffee mm. into uh, uh, one cup. So here we're going to have uh, about uh, four cups of coffee. So okay. we're talking about having uh, 60 grams of, of, mm, coffee, of coffee which is enough for us so yeah. uh, we will do about 200 and this is about 250 mils of, of water of water so yeah. it would be uh, very easy for us to have our yield out mm. you know if we make four cups at a go yeah okay so here you go 
Maybe start by putting it here. Two. So I don't have my weighing scale, but we can. <laughs> we can always measure just. <laughs> it's okay. We can yeah. always go with so, this. Yeah, the right measurements are that you can have your 15 grams of coffee. Yeah. In your cup, and then here you go. So very, as very simple. You have your coffee. No, I think we don't. Yeah. We need to mention that you need to have a filter. Yeah, you need to. Yes, yes, yes you're right. You actually. might have someone, you know, just pour it. And you're right, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's always better to have a filter because it helps you to kind of uh, uh, um, infuse the coffee so the granules get stuck on top. Then yeah. you're having your brewed your coffee, coffee down. down there, so yes. you just very simple. This is our hot water. It's being brewed. Uh, yeah. It's been. Uh, uh, boiled. Boiled. So mm. uh, you need it about uh, at a boiling point, but you give it some minutes to yeah. rest a bit because you can't drink it when it's too hot. Yeah. Yeah. So here you have to to pour it over. You can either use that kettle to pour over, or you use um, a pour over kettle. This looks like the ones that we used to use back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But I think I can use that. Yeah. If you don't mind, so gently. Gently, just do it gently. Look at the coffee, so fresh. Yeah. yeah. I think this is one of the things, uh, first things that they teach at a coffee school that when you're pouring the water, it has to be in a circular motion. Yes, <laughs> you just don't pour, you know, as you please. It has to be in a circular kind of motion. Yeah, such that you can have an even yeah. um, flow, you know. Yeah, for those watching at home, I hope you can see how beautiful this looks on your screens there we're brewing a beautiful cup of coffee and as it goes up you can give it some seconds to make yeah. sure that it, uh, it all goes down yeah. wow look at that so interesting yeah yeah so as we brew this uh, we'll talk about the different kind of flavors that we can get from a roast uh, what kind of flavors uh, basically do we get and is there a particular recipe that each person has to get a different flavor or you know it's kind of like a general type of flavor that we can all get yeah actually if i can take you back just briefly during the, the roasting process yeah. so as you're roasting the rust roaster itself in most cases we give it time before you start roasting your coffee yeah. so you give it some you, you heat it up we call yeah. it heating up so yeah. you heat it up to a temperature of about 230 to 235 degrees above so to ensure that the coffee you're going to drop in yeah remember the coffee you're dropping in is green yeah and the coffee is um, exposed to the uh, atmospheric temperature yeah it's exposed to the atmospheric temperature, temperature. yeah so when you drop the coffee in it's going to drop the temperature that you had maintained before yeah okay so that one is technically done as a roaster i have to be there standing and monitoring my temperature so i drop in my coffee in and then i have to maintain my burner ratio mm. so i fire it up to ensure that we are maintaining the temperature in the drum and not leaving it relaxed yeah so we have three stages of roasting mm. we are looking at the drying stage whereby the um, the heat inside the roaster yeah. is nailing down the moisture which is present in a coffee bean before it's being roasted. Yeah. Then at that stage, we go into a developing stage. So the coffee starts developing. This is where you talk about the flavors, mm. you know? So this, this stage where the caramelization takes place, yeah. which is from about, if you drop in at around, um, 260 degrees, 235 degrees, it drops down, the, the, the roaster drops down its temperature yeah. to about um, 70 degrees. That is way down, you know? I think that's where it becomes exothermic. Yes. Oh. Depending on how much quantity of coffee you are dropping in, yeah. it might not drop in if you're putting in a little, depending. Yeah. It depends, but yeah. I would say at a capacity of a roaster, if you put the right amount, it will drop down so when it drops down literally the the the, the, the temperature will move for about four minutes 
yeah, to about 160 degrees, yeah. then we reach to a stage of uh, developing. So, developing stage, coffee start changing colors, yeah, caramelization takes place, yeah. and then sugars are present into the coffee. Mm. So it develop, it starts developing flavors, you know, complexity, yeah. and then you're looking at monitoring your type of roast you're looking at. Mm. So if you're if you were looking at doing a medium roast, then if you're doing a temperature, you would look at around 210 to about 200 and uh, not more than 220, depending on how you want a medium roast done. Yeah. It can be a high medium, something like that, mm. slightly. And then if you are developing it further, yeah, mm. you are roasting, you know, the last stage yeah. which is the roasting stage so the coffee start changing colors yeah. so now it does a medium dark roast mm. then you're doing a dark, dark roast, roast. Yeah. so you're looking at more temperatures like 232 you're doing a medium to dark roast yeah. and then we're talking about salacious you mm. know um you go to 200 and uh, about 240 doing a real dark roast with more oily on the body and uh, yeah so interesting you know yeah. so now if as we are brewing i think our coffee is ready yeah coffee is ready so as we do our brewing we can have that on top here yeah if you don't mind and we can have a cup of coffee yeah you can just move this here it's served This is the part we always actually wait for <laughs> really? to test the different kinds of coffee. Yeah. Um, Very so, simple, yeah. you know, and anyone can do that at home and you enjoy your coffee as you yeah, know, you're doing some stuff. Actually, it looks so simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if I can take you, uh, you said uh, you have a coffee school. Yes. And um, I think it's very important for us in Uganda to actually come up with these schools, you know, yeah. given the times that we're actually in, you know, with yes. the whole lockdown and yes. COVID. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some students are really not in school right now. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of other other things that we can learn outside of school, for example, you know, involving ourselves in the coffee business. So just run us through your school, okay, uh, what kind of activities you guys do, what kind of uh, courses that you offer and uh, how can someone, you know, approach you and you uh, get into uh, your school? Yeah, actually, thank you so much for yeah that opportunity yeah. and looking forward to kind of support our entire uh, country uh, amidst this uh, um, very uh, difficult times that yeah. we are going through. So our school, um, this is the school is called Gulf and Blends. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we, we got the concept kind of, uh, you know, people like blended coffee. Baristas talk about blendings, you mm. know, so we came with that idea to say that's Gulf and Blends. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a history actually behind that. So, yeah. yeah, our location, we are located at Uvaga. Yeah, as you reach um, Salt FM mm. or Salt Media, yeah. from there, it's just like five minutes. Yeah. you're reaching at gulf and blends okay. coffee so from there we train baristas mm -hmm. yeah we train baristas and if you're a barista out there you feel like you want to kind of handle these skills and then you, you need to build something for you you know for your career which is more tangible yeah. you can come and have this skill at gulf and blends you can train as a barista we can train you so we train them for a period of one month. Mm. Yeah, we train them a, peri a period of one month. You can come and do an advanced uh, skills mm. for your training course. So advanced skill is um, when you train, you train commercial basis, which is the espresso coffee machine where you're going to do all the coffees yeah. you know from cappuccino latte macchiato mochas you do all that kind of uh, coffee using that machine and mastering them because yeah. in most cases we've got standard way of serving mm. and standard way of preparing these coffees yeah. so as um, you're training you will learn that 
apart from learning that if you're doing advanced you're going to also learn the specialty coffee uh, brewing yeah. so specialty coffee starts with the green coffee because specialty this is this like the standard way of preparation it can either be the green beans it's being carefully you know taken care of yeah. to meeting certain standard yeah. so now we're going to we're going to also have a specialty preparation yeah. of coffee i'm talking about a brewing in yeah. the other hand where we would be having different tools that we are using there and they are actually traditionally known yeah. for their uh, uh, different tests and mm. different grinds of coffee required for you to brew them. Yeah. The other one is commercial because you only use one grind of coffee which is espresso grind to kind of make all these other coffees. Yeah. Now you will need to adjust your grinder, have it more coarser to kind of do a French press, do a V60, do a Chemex, yeah. you know, and all those other coffees, even a drip coffee which you're having at home. Yeah. You need a specific grind to make sure that you're not overflowing yeah. the coffee or messing up all over the table. Yeah. Yes, so that is for the advanced. Yeah. So if you're doing a basics training, mm -hmm. you will only learn the commercial. You know, some people want that because they have been running over and they've mm -hmm. been like uh, involved in the yeah, coffee business yeah, yeah they were already waiters or waitresses mm. now they just want to catch up yeah, yeah so that way also you just come and do basics oh. because you have some idea okay so we move together to ensure that we have our goals met yeah okay in um, our career so is there a way that uh, these different people can contact you are you on social media uh, you already told us you're located in Rubaga next yes. to Salt uh, Media. So are you on social media and what are the handles that people can find you? Yeah, with? actually you can reach us. Um, you can reach us on our handles. Like I can give you your con my contacts. We yeah. are on WhatsApp, we are on Facebook. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can reach us uh, on Facebook. It's Gulf and Blends. You just go to Gulf and Blends, you find us on Facebook and uh, our contacts. If you can reach us direct as well, we can be so uh, helpful to you and welcome you at uh, Gulf and Blends. And literally, we call ourselves the coffee culture. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so I can give you the number yeah. 0701 Okay. I can repeat the number, it's 0701 mm -hmm. And that's a WhatsApp and a calling number? Yeah, that's a calling number and it's the WhatsApp number. You can reach us and you can also hit on the Facebook and yeah. then you find us. Uh, yeah, you comment or you tell us whatever you feel like discussing yeah. with Gulf and Vince. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Talking about that as we actually have our cup of coffee before it gets so cold. Uh, we're talking before the show began and uh, you had something interesting that you wanted to tell people out there. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to you know, start this barista ah. journey of theirs. <laughs> so I just want you to yeah. look into that camera yeah. and just tell that well, person, I know there is someone. <laughs> all right. Yeah, like he said, I know there is someone. I want to thank uh, um, the team of, uh, House, of Talent. House of Talent for hosting me. And I'm sure he's hosted the whole academy in here, though <laughs> others are invisible. But <laughs> I'm sure all of you are in here. So um, we are giving out uh, an opportunity for those who are interested, they're feeling so much enthusiastic into coffee and they want to train as baristas. We are giving a chance for five people out there if you want to train as a barista. We are giving a chance of a 50% um, discount. discount such that uh, you can come and train with us. You know, this is an opportunity, it's your opportunity. So um, you will have to call um, House of Talent, give them a call. Um, the first five people, I'm sure you will be <laughs> the lucky ones and they will contact us for the lucky ones and we will um, welcome you. Um, 
for the training. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, just to reiterate what he said, uh, we're giving you an opportunity. I know that uh, there are those of you who watch this show and keep on wondering how can I become a barista, how can I get involved in the coffee process, and Gulf and Blends is here to give you that opportunity. So, for the first, first five people to contact House of Talent, you can DM us on our social media handles. For the first five people, you're going to get a 50% discount from Gulf and Blends so that you can start your barista journey. We have told you don't be like in Kampala where we say we didn't know, but we have let you guys know. So get involved in the coffee business. I believe that it's something that is going to be, you know, very good for not only your future, but, you know, for the future of those around you. And it will give you basically skills, added added on skills. They call it add on skills, you yes. know, in other areas. Um, yeah. As we draw close to the end of the show, I just want to thank you, Abdul, for you know, coming here and, you know, just giving us your experience yes. traveling around yeah. East Africa, being in Kisoro, yeah. your first experience with coffee and, uh, you know, telling us about the roasting process, all the equipment and all the flavors that are involved. I believe that I, I personally have learned a lot from uh, this time and I believe that everyone out there has also learned a lot. But like I said, we are drawing close to the end. But mm -hmm. before we leave, I want you to look into that camera. I know that there's someone watching. I just want you to encourage them, you know, those people with questions of should I really get into this? Should I do this? Just encourage them and let them know why they should get into uh, the coffee uh, business. All right. Thank you um, for um, that concern. Now, what I would want to encourage, like uh, my fellow Ugandans, mm. Uganda is a very rich country. In terms of coffee, coffee even during this season, that the hardest season we are going through, um, we as Uganda has been exporting coffee. It has been a commodity that has never stopped, even amid this, this hmm. period. So we are looking at uh, we are looking at a business, I would say at large, which is which is more encouraging, more interesting, and it can uh, be your next future. You know, kind of like an investment. Kind of, it can be your next future tomorrow. Yeah. You become a barista. You come and train. Look at someone who's at. Look at yourself as someone who's behind the counter, serving coffee, trying to craft it very nicely, and you have this kind of knowledge into your head. Someone has hired you, and you can simply do it the way you are being. Um, required to do it. Yeah. So I feel so happy when someone has trained and he's, yeah, I would give you out of experience. Yeah. I've got some students, they train and yeah, they kind of uh, get to, 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 to travel. Yeah. yeah, They go abroad and by the time he sends back maybe a photo if you just say someone is you know doing well <laughs> yeah you know we have a tendency of other fellow ugandans you know going abroad and they come back when they start hiding themselves you know why it's mm. because someone has gone out and did not go with a skill yeah. so it's so important for us now to kind of involve ourselves in skills it will dwell us from whatever situation that we have been kind of uh, longing for and we become better persons for our future. Yeah. Well, yes. Abdul, thank you very much uh, for those words. And I believe that whoever is out there has really been encouraged to get into, you know, the coffee business. And there's a saying that start now, you know, you shouldn't wait to put yeah. things into motion yeah, before you start, you know, yeah. just start now. Like uh, Abdul gave you his contacts. You have our contacts at House of Talent on our social media handles. Contact us. We can always let you know how you can get involved uh, in the coffee uh, business. And if you have someone out there who you believe that you want to see on this show, you can also nominate them. We'll have them here. But our time is fast spent. Abdul, yeah. thank yeah. you again very yeah, much. Maybe uh, just a second. Yeah. I would like to send my regards to yeah please to, <laughs> I don't want to send my regards to a few people yeah yeah first of all I'm sending my regards to to mr. Bonnie yeah he's one of my partners yeah. at uh, Gulf and Blends uh, yeah. I know he's watching um, one live uh, one love archive 
uh, Lake Bunyoni. I know everyone down there is watching. <laughs> yeah. I told you guys to watch um, our coffee break today yeah. in the morning at the House of uh, Talent. Talent. And uh, yeah, Rachel, um, um, saluting you. I know you're part of the team. Yeah, I think yeah. uh, I'm so humbled yes. for having me here. Yeah. And uh, hopefully next time you will also yes. um, host us. There will be a next time because I believe that we still had a lot of uh, stuff to exhaust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but till next time, thank you for watching the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel, as hosting uh, Yusuf Abdul from Gulf and Blends, are uh, giving us his story and his experience in the coffee business. Remember, you can always uh, get us on House of Talent uh, Television UG.com, that's our website, or you can get on our social media handles at House of Talent Television, that's on Facebook, and and on Twitter, let us know what you think about the show. If you have any questions, you can always ask us and we'll be at your disposal to get back to you. Thank you for watching. This is The Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. Have a blessed day.